Right, hello YouTube! Greetings from a sick, lazy Ibro reviewer. And today, I have not just one review for you, but two for the price of one. How about that? Yes, today is the review for both the North American release and the KO to Cassatoni edition of Masterpiece Bumblebee. Oh, oh yeah, and I guess Exospike is there too. Let's start off with this just to get out of the way. Exospike is a useless chunk of plastic that attempts to reference the 86 movie where he and B were good buds and Spike had a suit that could do a bunch of stuff. However, I hate this figure. It was included with the set just to make paying for a car bot's full price justified, and given what we got, I'd say it wasn't all that much justified at all. I mean, it looks the part well enough, but I just think this thing either feels rushed or uncared for, or potentially both. This, by the way, is the official version. Here's the Takasa version for comparison. And the KO does have a bit of lighter hue to the blue, I'm okay with it because the KO actually has a clear helmet as opposed to the murky visor that is the official. I mean, how does Spike drive with that limited of vision? So, transformation, because the movie did it, and it'd be pretty lame accessory if this one didn't. Lift up these side panels, bring around the arms, flip them 180, and fold the wheels in. Close the side panels up, bring around the chest panels, and straighten out the doors. Extend the legs in their accordion hinge, flip the feet forward, and swing around the wheel assembly to make a heel. Remove the helmet dome, angle Spike's head down, and replace the helmet, and finito! And... Exo Spike. There's not really too much to look at here. He's practically a Legends figure with less features, articulation, and polish. The hands are molded shut. The arms are always out with a rather limited range of movement, and overall he just looks... meh. And the KO does improve things a little with the clear helmet instead of whatever the official likes to call clear. That just looks like dirty or foggy or whatever. Like Spike got into his suit just after a rain and forgot to turn the windshield defogger on. It just looks awful. For size comparison, the horribly out of scale MP22 Spike that Hasbro likes to consider proper scale, and here's probably the best example to just show how out of scale the human figures are. Just judging by the size of Exosuit's head, human figures should be about here. And that's with placing it in a certain way so the heads are identically sized. And then when you compare it to the other properly sized MP cars, boom. That there. That is about where a person should be in the real life in relation to a Datsun 270Z. As for just compared to the KO itself, again, the murky helmet and the lighter shade of knockoff blue. Something that both of these guys are great for, though, is having joints and tabs fall apart left, right, and center. And by great, I mean it sucks. It doesn't matter what I do, official or KO, Spike just will not stay together. It's incredibly bothersome, and I have absolutely no idea how they could have designed something so terrible and slapped the masterpiece name on it. Seriously, I thought it was just because they bought a KO, and I was like, okay, the official has got to be better. But nope, official Spike is just as terrible, if not worse sometimes. As far as Spike goes, he looks derpy, his shoulders are weak and useless, and who can forget the time when his knees went the wrong way in the show? So that aside, let's look at why we really all bought this set. It's the VW Beetle Bumblebee. Just so we're clear, the silver bumper is something I painted on the KO, so now you know and now you can tell them apart. So, Bumblebee! Bumblebee is an orangey-yellow Volkswagen Beetle and a fantastic representation of one, might I add. He looks just spot on in terms of the proportions, the shape, everything. He looks just incredible. And something to cast Tony was kind enough to give us was dual mirrors, with the whole of the passenger mirror having its pin pushed in to make room for the other mirror. It's a little addition I enjoy since it adds to the symmetry. Is it accurate? Not really, but I think it looks great. The interesting thing I find, though, is the box in the official Hasbro version shows Bumblebee with a passenger side mirror, despite having both mirrors that it comes with specifically designated for drivers. Mind you, a lot of what that box has to show is a little inaccurate. Yeah, I'm looking at you, crotch flap. So enough comparing. Let's look at the Beetle itself. As said before, this is an incredible representation of the VW Beetle. It's a faithful shape. It has the curves nailed down, the turn signals, the tail lights, the way the back comes together the way it does. When compared to the animation model and the original microchange toy, man, this is a far cry from that era. It's just an incredibly faithful Volkswagen Beetle, and I love it so much for that. As for accessories, it comes with a spare tire. This works by removing the license plate and slotting it right in, and that works decently enough. Alternatively, and this is something I love to bits, you can store it under the hood of the car. 
The reason why I love this particularly is because the original car had its engine in the back, so the spare tire was in the front, if not rear mounted. That's just such an attention to detail that I love. So just in general, I cannot gush over this alt mode as a standalone vehicle enough. Keyword, and I'm going to harp on it to death throughout the remainder of this review, standalone. Because we're now going into size comparisons and... Oh boy. So first off, what does MPB actually scale with? How about himself? Yep, he sure does fit in with other Bumblebee molds. You and Carbots. Believe it or not, after doing the math, he actually scales really well with the G1 cars. I don't know about all of them, but here's G1 Jazz and G1 Sideswipe. And this here is where the real world Beetle would scale with other vehicles. Yes, the Beetle had a reputation for being a tiny car, but a lot of that was on the inside. If you notice here, this is where the car stops, and then in a bit for the running boards, then you have a door, and it's not a very big area for people. Also, back when it came out, cars were huge. Comparatively for its time, it was a tiny car, because everything else in that era were massive Buicks, muscle cars, and the like. By the time the 80s rolled around and the market was undergoing a crash, cars were coming out smaller and cheaper. By the mid-80s, the Beetle was about the same size as, say, a Honda Civic, or nowadays a Miata, or what have you. In short, Beetles aren't as small as everyone wants to imagine. Otherwise, though, MP22 Spike has a car he now scales with, so that's awesome. Here's MP Prowl, Trax, Ironhide, and Prime Tra Magnus. And for the funsies, G1 Prime Tra Magnus. And the G1 truck is just a touch too small. And well, if we're going to discuss scale, good grief are the MP Seekers tiny in comparison. Like, at least half the size they should be. I think what really takes the cake for size silliness, though, is Classic Speed. Yes, that's right, a Masterpiece car is smaller than a deluxe one that was small to begin with. Why? Is there any reason to make it this small? He's thinner, just about as long. I personally find this a tad ridiculous, and perhaps even a bit of a rip-off in terms of money spent. This guy is 20 bucks. This guy is 70 US for the Japanese, or a whole 120 Canadian. This is the first time I've seen the domestic Hasbro release actually be more expensive than the imported version. I don't know, I'm just, I'm finding it hard to justify this when it's a lot smaller than Deluxe while also being at least six times the price. It just doesn't add up, man. And then when you compare it to the other Deluxes back in the day and the scale comparison is even worse. So in short, no. Everything, as much as Takara would have you believe it so, Everything does not scale with MPB. Given that I've used this joke now for one whole year, and well, I'll be honest, to some reviewer's irritation at me doing so, sorry about that, I'm putting this joke to rest. Almost nothing scales well with MPB, and as blisteringly fantastic the car mode is, it doesn't save it from the fact that this doesn't, nor will it ever scale with the rest of the MP line. Unless we're talking Inferno, in which case he actually might scale well with that guy because he's ridiculously small as well. Long story short, as a standalone figure, not taking any other toy into consideration, this is an incredible vehicle mode, well proportioned, beautifully capturing the essence that was the original Volkswagen Beetle, and no matter what angle you look at it, just screams excellence. Okay, not that angle, never look at it from that angle. On to transformation. Pull apart the front of the car from the back and top of the car. Rotate up the legs, swing around the knee joints until they click into place. Fold in the remaining hood of the car and rotate the entire rear half of the car upwards. On the feet, fold in the wheel and wrap the doors around the front of the car. On the back half, apply the slightest bit of pressure upwards on the rear bumper, and then untab and swing around the rear fenders. I do mean slightest pressure, by the way. This is what can happen if you repeatedly transform your figure and apply too much pressure for your grubby mitts. Ugly. Anyway, untab the arms from the fenders, rotate around the arms, fold open the hands and swing around the rear taillights. Finally, on the back, fold down the back of the car, and again, very carefully rotate the rear section of the car. It was during this particular step, on the billionth time I transformed this thing on the KO, that I had the rear window hinge just up and snap on me. It's what you get when you make important joints out of translucent plastic and then cheapen it with the KO. Fold in the rear bumper and fit it all into place. And then finally, finally, rotate the chest insignia. And here we have it, Masterpiece Bumblebee. And man, oh man, what a figure this is! 
Just top to bottom, here we have a wonderfully executed masterpiece Bumblebee with little kibble. Just presentation-wise, this is a sight to behold for sure. The soft yellows, the contrasting black, the overall color layout, the clean presentation of everything tucking away just really make this an incredible bot. Now then, official versus masterpiece, what's different? Surprisingly, not much. The emblem is a bit more shoddier on the KO, and the arms on particularly my KO version aren't screwed in all the way. And the KO company provided left and right mirrors with a hood pin tapped in all the way so that your mirrors are symmetrical. So pros and cons for both are there. Though, if you're a Volkswagen purist, you might want the single mirror. Really, in the end, there's pros and cons to each version, and aside from my KO back half-snapping and making the Volkswagen Beetle truck edition, I can't really recommend one over the other based on all the factors. Price, presentation, accessories, integrity, name brand, and so on and so forth. Another difference might be, though, the KO came with two phases, which I'm 87% certain are just the same face twice on the KO, though it also came with the Amazon exclusive battle mask. The official, on the other hand, came with two distinct faces in a shade lighter of grayish beige, happy and neutral, both of which look great. They each also come with indistinguishable blasters from each other, similar in type to what Masterpiece Ironhide and Ratchet came with. So there we have it, official versus KO, Masterpiece only and Spike. Which set is better than the other? It's a tough call, but I'll let you be the judge of that for yourself. Articulation features a rotating neck joint with up and down movement, ball jointed shoulders for rotation and outward, bicep rotation, 110 degree elbow, nothing in the hand department, no rotation, no posability, unless you're good with pins, there isn't even a way to upgrade them. Lame. Waist rotation. Universal hip joints for outward, forward, and backward movement. 90 degree knees, thigh rotation, forward, backward, and tilting angles. In some aspects, there's some incredible articulation. But in most cases, I look at it and go, seen it before, on a B specifically. Seriously, most of what you see here is found on Classics B in one shape or another, whether it be ball joints or actual joints or whatever. It's crazy. Anyway, scale comparison. Classics B is ever so slightly taller. Are we kidding here? Classics B was small to begin with, about a head shorter than most other deluxes of the day, and literally everybody said when that came out that it was in great scale with the Classics line. And then B shows up, and everyone says, perfect scale, perfect scale, with the rest of the line. Methinks people don't know what they're talking about sometimes. I'm asking honestly here. You can give your two cents about this issue in the comments, whatever, but let me make my case for a second. Compared to Deluxe United Tracks, Classics Deluxe B is just over a head shorter. So if we were to use camera angles to make this size height thing happen on, say, Masterpiece Wheeljack and B, B goes from half the height to just over a head shorter. It might look weird to some at this very second, as I'm sure you're not used to it, but if we got B at this scale, would anybody have complained? B is still shorter, still smaller than any other bot, but not ridiculously small. And then translate this camera angle and distance into car mode. Right here, this is still, obviously not 100% one-to-one, but still dang near close when it comes to scaling. And it's a size I would have loved to see B actually come in, and I honestly wouldn't have noticed the scaled issue. That's it. That's the last I'm talking about B in scale. I wholeheartedly promise. I have made my case. I've been going on a full year about it. It's time to put this argument to rest. B is too small. I don't like it. I wish she was something around here. For those wondering, this is the camera angle I had going on. So no more ranting. Here's a size sale compared to other figures. United Tracks, Masterpiece Wheeljack, Ratchet, Optimus Prime, Ultra Magnus, and from tallest to smallest, here's the Masterpiece line as we know it today. So that was Masterpiece Bumblebee and Spike. On his own merit, he's a fantastic figure. And Spike is... He's alright. He's nothing special, he's there, I guess. But Bumblebee, I really do love this figure quite a bit. He's hit all the right notes for me. Well, most notes, anyway. I'm even willing to forgive the back windshield as it pulls the look off in bot mode fantastically, and I know deep down there was no way to get around that issue. When compared to the other figures and even the prize that sticks out like a sore thumb that this guy is, at its core, a very detailed deluxe figure with a price tag of around 100 bucks, depending on your source, and on that alone, 
it's very hard to recommend this for those that wish to support the official release. Anyway, this has been a long review for such a very small Autobot, and I'm happy to have laid this oddity to rest. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Review. And here we have it, Masterpiece Bumblebee. Man, oh man. I would just like to thank the GMC Jimmy outside that refuses to put a muffler onto his car. That's illegal. Thank you for ruining this recording with your stupid engine. Still waiting. That's right, gotta wait for your car to warm up, because, you know, stupid 4x4 has no catalytic on it. It's just straight engine pollution, moron. And away he goes. Almost. Come on. Stupid GMC Jimmy.